It's Fangirls Night Out, and you know what that means. It's time to grab a beverage and kick back with us, Britt, Kelsey, Brianne, and Danielle. Four business owners fangirling over our favorite pop stars, their unique brands, and creative strategies behind the fame. So let's go, because we all deserve a night out. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Oh, my God. We're back again. <laughs> <laughs> this time, sadly, without AJ. But oh, I know. No. no special guests this time. Just yeah. How do we How do we follow that up? I think we, we literally can't. can't. We're going to try. I mean, we have we have alcohol. So <laughs> that's a start. You know. Uh, but welcome back to another installment of fangirls night out we are finally back into our rhythm where we're doing this monthly hey megan and gosh i've i've missed my girls we're all at least partially vaccinated so we'll get to the where maybe we'll stream this in person live that'd be so fun. When, when we're all like vaccinated we should change our names to be like brit moderna <laughs> <laughs> yes. totally for that. So if you're new here, welcome to Fangirls Night Out. Um, the four of us each, if you're not familiar, are part business owners slash part Backstreet fangirls. So that is really the premise of our show. We talk about both things that we love from business and marketing to boy bands and pop culture and all of those fun topics. So tonight's topic is pretty re uh, related to that. We are going into personality types and group dynamics, not only in boy bands and groups, but we're also going to talk on talk about how this has really affected us in our own careers a little bit and teams that we've worked in. And, you know, Britt and Kelsey are, are the dynamic duo with their business. So I'm sure they have a lot to speak to there with how to build a team. And and Danielle is always collaborating with so many people with her business. So we're just going to get into it. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to Britt now to introduce our personality test that we all took. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm a big like super nerd when it comes to personality tests. I feel like when I when I first started in like the corporate world, like I I started at an insurance company first, and they had me take a personality test, and um, I was like fascinated by it because I was like, okay, I've heard these things exist, but I don't really know what they mean. So, one of the ones that we are going to talk about today is um, is actually on 16personalities.com. Um, so if you guys go to it, you can actually take a test there um, and figure out your own personality um, or your personality type, and it's really cool because it really gives you some insight into just how you function and how you communicate with other people. And, um, and you know, from from our perspective, even if, even if you look at it just as simple as from like a person to person or within the fandom even of like figuring out these things and figuring out how you can effectively communicate with each other and talk to each other and um, have some really valuable conversations because you know what makes the other person thrive and you know what makes the other person tick and you know um, all of these things about how they may respond to you just based on some of these really fun details. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're going to dive into a lot of that and, uh, and then we're going to talk about not just the personality types, but we are going to go into more detail about how this can affect the group dynamics as we talk about the Backstreet Boys and we talk about um, some other groups, girl groups and guy groups and all of these, um, all of these fun things that uh, and what how the personalities just kind of function and um, factor into that as well. So, uh, Brian, do we have an intro toast from somebody special? Oh, you know, I might have that up my sleeve somewhere, actually. <laughs> Yay! Um, let's see. Well, let's all put our glasses up, but let's let's uh let's see who has a toast for us. Let's get on with the show. Turn the lights down low. And this is Fangirls Night Out. 
Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers I love that. it. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm so glad we don't have to sing that anymore. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Try singing it in front of AJ. That was oh yeah. Yeah, Brian did a great job with that. You were the hero. <laughs> you had to remind him what the lyrics were. Yeah, <laughs> the words. He's quite he rusty. Uh, well, <laughs> it's been it's been a while. He yeah, hasn't been on tour. It has. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me about that gem we had, guys. Now we can have every episode at least have AJ up here. So yeah. uh, it's just a lovely amazing. Reminder. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. All right. Why don't we just dive into it, you guys? Everybody knows who we are by now, right? Right. Yeah. Who has to do formal intros? You could see them right there on the screen. <laughs> um, but let's dive in and um, we're going to actually share what our personality types are. And again, if you go to 16personalities.com, um, you can see what personalities. Um, or what what personality you are um, or personality type. And if you, um, yeah, like let us know on Twitter or Instagram or wherever you find us um, what you guys are. And uh, yeah, Kels, do you want to jump in and and tell people a little bit about what the, what the campaigner means? Sure. Yeah. So I am an ENFP and all of these letters, for those of you who are new to the Myers-Briggs test, stand for something. So that means I'm extroverted. That's N is intuitive, right? Mm -hmm. F is feeling. I'm definitely a feeler. And then P is perceiving. It's interesting because I was an ENFJ for like as long as I can remember. And then I retook it for this and apparently I've shifted over to the P side. So I don't know, but campaigner is um, they describe it on the site as enthusiastic, creative and sociable free spirits who can always find a reason to smile. I think that, Aww, that feels pretty, pretty accurate. accurate. Right. Right. I mean, I like the opposite it. of the diehard crier. You know, uh, well, I'm a feeler. Remember? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when I'm but when I'm crying, it's not always a sad thing. That's like, true. You, I'm just, just, you just feel all the feels, right? Yeah. yeah. Aww, I know. I, I thought of that when we when we put all of our um, personality types up here, like the campaigner, um, the entertainer, all that. It reminded me of our very first episode when we did the fangirl archetypes, and I was like, I don't know, but oh, I think yeah. I relate. I relate more to the title of diehard crier than I do campaigner, but that's just <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> this is like the formal Kels. This is like the business right, right, right. Kels. But then, like the fangirl side is the diehard crier. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. 100 percent so funny i love it all right oh who's going next who wants to talk about theirs next um i can go if you go if ahead. you'd like to hear about the logician i guess is how we would pronounce it yeah um female so kevin according... i'm sorry that just that <laughs> thank you megan <laughs> i'm sorry i just got the comp compliment of a lifetime <laughs> yeah, that's okay <laughs> Please continue, um, Danielle. <laughs> yeah. So it says that logicians, I'm probably saying this wrong, pride themselves on their unique perspectives and vigorous intellect. They can't help but puzzle over the mysteries of the universe. Wait, Which that is so them. you, though. <laughs> it reminds me of the genius episode. Yeah. Yeah. Really brought that oh, to my her. God. It's, I feel like this is, like, really giving me a lot of credit. It says this personality type is fairly rare, but with their creativity and inventiveness, logicians aren't afraid to stand out from the crowd. I really do think that. I you definitely. Know. I know you you don't want to accept it, but it's true. I guess it's not so bad. It has me up there with uh, Bill Gates and Albert Einstein. Hell yeah! So I feel I feel okay about that. I am an INTP. So I'm introverted, intuitive, thinker, thinking, thinking perceiving. prospecting, right? Oh, pro it says prospecting, which means this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a planner, though, so whatever that means. And then <laughs> turbulent. Ooh. Wow. Oh god. It's like it feels like a lot. It's a, up. a big personality <laughs> for me. I don't know. Um, I thought it was really interesting though to like look at it and see who it like ranked me with and mm -hmm. my strengths and weaknesses. And at first, when I first did, I was like, oh, so I don't think this is right. But 
I think it's pretty accurate. I think it, like, the more I read about it, I was like, okay, I can see that being a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was okay with it. I'm definitely introverted, and I'm definitely less of a feeling, like, an emotional feeling person, so, yeah, I don't know. I never, I don't think, I know that I've taken, um, what's the other popular one? Enneagram. Enneagram. Yeah. Um, and I get a different number every time I take it, so. Oh, oh really? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay. but when I look at, like, people share, like, you know, on Instagram, like, little s- snippety sort of things about mm-hmm. the personality types, I've self-diagnosed as a nine. Oh. <laughs> self-diagnosed. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So I'll have to look into that and see how that compares to this. That's so good. Yeah. It's pretty accurate to me. I think so. Thanks. All right. My turn. So I landed as the entertainer, which was a surprise to me. Um, right up there with Miley Cyrus, Adele, Adam Levine, and oh. God rest his soul, Steve Irwin. Aww. That's such a good group. I know. <laughs> I <should> be company. <laughs> Um, but the traits of the entertainer says extroverted, which yeah, some days really depends. Um, observant, feeling, and prospecting it says these people love vibrant experiences, engaging in life eagerly, and taking pleasure in discovering the unknown. They could be very social, often encouraging others into shared activities. <gasps> That's definitely yes. you. Yeah. <laughs> That encouraging like others in the shared vibes. activities. Yes, that's chat. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's such pop chat vibes. That's yeah. really cute. That's and I think, you know, I don't really like to like, I'm not an entertainer in the sense that I like to be on a stage and like tell knock knock right. jokes all day, but I <laughs> do. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I can relate it back to marketing a little bit in the sense that, you know, I like doing something for an audience. You know, I right. like doing things with an audience in mind and like trying to find things that other people would find interesting. So I guess when you're entertaining people, it's, it doesn't have to necessarily be performing, but kind of right. just understanding mm-hmm. what other people would enjoy and be yeah. Like, so yeah, that's even yeah, just you're like, your, your Twitter alone is yeah. entertaining. Mm-hmm. And even though you're mm-hmm. not like on a stage, you're putting stuff out there that's entertaining people. So yeah. yeah. Megan said, just Brianne, don't wrestle our pink crop. Yeah, I'll, I'll t- make sure Steve and the, the Irwin family. Oh my God. The pink croc in captivity. Oh, cute. That's so funny. <laughs> well, yeah. it's funny, especially because you really like Robert Irwin. <laughs> I do. She loves him. I do. So I can't wait for him to turn 18. And he <laughs> probably has he probably has a similar personality to his dad, right? So Oh, yeah. of course. Such a sweet soul. I mean, because and Bindi seems like a gem as well. Oh my god. They're just a great family. Oh, I love Bindi, even though didn't she beat Nick on Dancing with the Stars? She yeah. Did. But she she was good. It's okay. She was so lovable yeah. though. It's like you you yeah. she's the only one I would have like allowed it to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like allowable. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right. We'll let it slide. So sweet. Aww. I think even Nick like wanted her to win. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think so. I so. <laughs> he really oh, is. I love it. Um, so mine is the advocate. And it says here, well, mine said INFJ. So I am, let's see. Introverted, yes. Um, intuitive, feeler, and judging. No, no, I don't think that's a I don't think it um, means what we think it means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like you're judgy. <laughs> I'm very judgy, but that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> they said here that it says advocates may be reserves, but they communicate in a way that is warm and sensitive. This emotional honesty and insight can make a powerful impression on the people around them. Um, I like it. That's that's fluffy. Um, At times, advocates may focus so intently on their ideals that they don't take care of themselves. (laughs) All right. Um, Let's see. Many advocates feel compelled to find a mission for their lives. 
When they encounter inequity or unfairness, they tend to think, how can I fix this? They are well suited to support a movement to right a wrong, no matter how big or small. Advocates just need to remember that while they're busy taking care of the world, they need to take care of themselves too. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, but as her that business seems... partner and friend, I'm j- just saying this is extremely accurate. That does seem <laughs> accurate. Yeah, I mean, we even feel it. I think in our our group chat. I mean, anytime we're, like any of us is struggling or second guessing anything, like Brit always comes in and like brings us to our senses and like encourages us and advocates yes. for us, like brings us peace to the chat, you know? So That's true. Me. I, so my, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the people that are surrounding me here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Lady Gaga, Ooh. Taylor Swift, Hillary Duff, Alanis Morissette, wow. Oprah, Prince, and Ooh, Pharrell shit. Williams. What the heck? Yeah, what the hell are you? No. I, didn't, I didn't even have that many. I don't, Mine was no, Winston no. Sport, and then the two I mentioned, Bill Gates. My li- and- my li- oh, wait. I didn't even say what mine were. Can we go back to yeah. – I oh, want to yeah. share my – So um, I pulled, like, my favorites from the list. So for my famous people, I have Kelly Clarkson, Will Smith, and Robert Downey Jr. Um, oh. But then I also included – yeah, yes, yes. So so that <laughs> means AJ and I would get along really well in real life. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you do. I mean, we saw that in action. We do, yeah. But I think, like, even more so in, like, IRL. Um, <laughs> and then also I loved that they include on this website when you get your result, they include, like um, – like fictional characters as well. So I also got Michael Scott, which is so funny. Oh my God. That's amazing. Phil Dumpy. I love Phil Dumpy from A Modern Family. So and fun. Willy like- Wonka. Oh. <laughs> I don't oh know how I'm like Willy I, Wonka, but. I didn't see any like fictitious characters on mine. No. Yeah, I'm going back now. Yeah. Maybe that's me. I bet you it's like there's there's not enough famous people that they had to throw in some fake oh, ones. Oh, that's for me. true. That could be. Yeah, all of mine are like real people. Because it does say it said something about oh, seven percent of the population are campaigners. So maybe there mm-hmm. weren't enough like notable famous people to include. I don't know. Oh, here I got a couple. I've never oh. heard of any of these. Yeah, <laughs> someone from the Avengers, a couple people from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never it. heard of any of these. Big uh, oh, Carrie Bradshaw is also a campaigner from Ooh. Sex and City. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Mine are like a lot of like old white guys. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Newton. Man, okay. you're like a. Oh, I also have Russell Brand. I love him. A lot of mathy people on mine. Isn't That's weird. Mathy. Mathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love I'm not, I'm not down for that. Elliot Page. Oh. Nice. That's awesome. I like it. I like it. Yeah, the more I, like, read about mine, I was like, all right. Even I'm the parts that I didn't it. like, I was like, okay. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. You know <laughs> I what? I like it, but I hear you. What's, what's interesting with all these is the four of us all – like, even though we all have the same, like, likes and a lot of the same dislikes and things like that, our personality types are all different, which is mm-hmm. really interesting because I think that feeds into kind of the group dynamic of Fangirls yes. Night Out. It feeds into, like, our group chat that we have. It feeds into the fandom. It feeds, like, I can't imagine the amount of personality types that are across these uh, across just different pop culture fandoms. And you wonder, like, I... I I want to see something where it's like you zoom out on like a specific fandom and it's like a percentage of like, Oh, Taylor Swift fans, a percentage are, oh. you know, uh, ENFJ and a percentage of Harry Styles fans are, you know, INFP or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. you wonder if they gravitate more towards a celebrity that is more like them or mm-hmm. more more maybe just different and something they would like to like strive to be, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, that's really interesting. I would, I would love to see that, but I think you're right that like, like it, I guess it didn't really surprise me that all four of us are different personality types because although we have similar interests, I think mm-hmm. 
for a group to work well together, especially in like the way that we're working together, mm-hmm. it, you need to have balance. And I mean, we've even seen like within our group chat or even in our conversations, like we definitely balance each other out. Like when yeah. there's, if there's ever like, you know, like mm-hmm. strong feelings about something, like yeah. someone else will come in and be like, I just think yeah. that's, that's necessary. And that kind of links back to what we were talking about with like how these tests are now used in corporate companies and stuff. It's because it's so important when you're working with a team to make sure that your personality types are complementing each other. So mm-hmm. it's pretty mm-hmm. cool to see. Would you there guys... Was, guess- um, oh, go, ahead. Go, go ahead, Brian. I was going to ask, would you guys guess that each Backstreet Boy is a different one? Or do you think there's any overlap? Hmm. I think they're all different. They're probably I would all say, different. I was going to say that too, yeah. yeah. So curious. <laughs> probably some, no. of, probably like a couple, like mostly the same with like one or with one yeah, letter, like one or letter like, off. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. so so I think the easiest one to think about probably is like an introvert versus an extrovert. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, where like mm-hmm. introverts that doesn't necessarily mean they like don't like people and they just want to keep to themselves, although. <laughs> it could be, that could be part of it, yeah. That could definitely be part of it. Um, but Kels, I think you explained it probably better than I'm about to, so jump in. But um, but they 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 get most of their energy right mm-hmm. from people who, um, or they get their energy either from other people or or from is it from themselves or how is it? How can you explain that better? So it's like, it's rather than most of us tend to think that extrovert means you're really outgoing and introvert means you're really shy, but it actually is just based on where you get your energy from. So the best way that I've heard it described to me from someone else who was teaching it to me was if you go to an event with a lot of people, like imagine going to a networking event where you're meeting new people and you're having to like put yourself out there and talk to people and stuff. Do you leave feeling like exhausted and like you need to go home and go go to bed or do you leave feeling amped up and excited and like where are we going next and so that will show you kind of that makes more sense like it's where you're getting your energy is it filling you up or is it exhausting you so um yeah because even me like i'm labeled as an extrovert and yes when i go to events like that i leave feeling super amped up and exciting and wanting to do something else but i also like love my alone time. And I'm shy sometimes. Like I'm not always like the one to like put myself out there first. So like, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's more so about where your energy is derived from. And that was really eye opening to me Mm -hmm. when I realized that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen you shy in my life. Really? (laughs) Really? That's a good thing because (laughs) you and I balance each other out really well, especially, especially at like networking events where like, I would rather like climb the wall, no pun no backstreet boys I'm in, I'm in. Um, but <laughs> i would rather climb the wall and like try like i i'm i'm more reserved from that perspective and like i i feel like i need an extrovert or i need somebody who who can easily thrive on the energy of other people versus me where like not, again not that not that that means that you have to be shy or you have to be reserved if you're an introvert but i would imagine it's probably more common Oh yeah, um, you know, so, um, but yeah, like if you imagine, right, like how weird is this to think, right? So imagine the four of us are at a Backstreet Boy show. Imagine, yeah. right? <laughs> Sounds so weird I would, I would love it. I would love okay, nothing so, more than that. All right. So I know. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. Sign okay. me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Where do it? First, you got to get vaccinated. No, um, but no, we, <laughs> imagine we're at the future Vegas residency that we're putting out there into the universe that they've also put out there into the universe. Oh, yeah. Um, four of us are at the show. We're having a good time. Five Backstreet Boys are having a good time. They're on stage. They mm-hmm. leave the stage, right? Who, oh, how- who's the introvert and who's the extrovert? Who's like, like who's I feel exhausted. who wants the after party? Who wants to thrive on like the fan energy and who wants to just go back to their beautiful hotel room on the Vegas trip <laughs> and just, just chill. And just, okay, I just did a three hour show. That was the best show of those girls' lives. Who <laughs> That I feel like is like Kevin, definitely introverted. That's yes. what I would say. Brian, I definitely too. introverted. I think Nick and Howie are both extroverts. 
And I think AJ probably can kind of like go either way. I think AJ probably wants to be more extroverted than he's like allowed to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to look at like, cause when they did all the things at the Chateau nightclub, like it was hardly ever all five of them. It was usually like right. and Howie or like Brian was never there. I feel like Brian was off with Leanne somewhere. It's like time to go yeah. be a husband. <laughs> Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, you can, I guess, tell who had that second wind or who was at yeah. least wanting that paycheck in that second wind. <laughs> I you know, know that when we, yeah. when we, when Britt and I, Britt and I did one of those and I remember Nick being like really exhausted. Like you could yeah. tell he was tired, but, but is that like, was he just tired or like, right. was it? Was it like draining his energy? I don't know. Cause I would have, yeah. I would have classified him as an extrovert as well. It was like two 30 in the morning in the middle of downtown <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> we were a little foggy. Yeah. Do you think it ever gets old for them? Like mm, that. Probably. Doing like it has to. It's like, got to be yeah. so repetitive and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're just doing the same thing over and over. Imagine doing the same webinar over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I guess when you have a family, it's like I just would rather be back with my family. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, think it's like your dream job, I would imagine. I would hope they're all doing their dream jobs, but but yeah. it's still labeled as work. You've been doing the same mm -hmm. thing for almost thirty years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think if you even think about like Nick having like three kids and like lives with his in laws, like you <laughs> have to be extroverted for that. Like you have to have like get a lot your of energy them. from people or like being around yeah. people to like tolerate that. And then like, you know, Brian just has like the one kid. <laughs> right? yeah. like, le leave us alone. We're in our mansion. And, done. Please. Yeah. and that giant house for the three of them, like, don't come near me. I'm mm -hmm. having my introvert time. <laughs> I'm, I'm in this wing having my introvert time. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like he probably is like, don't come over here. I'm having introvert time. I like his voice. <laughs> you, know I, you know what I like to picture is this, this might be like a whole tangent thing, but you know, I saw on the Ava Dean account that they posted like those pictures of Ava at her like little dance recital. I feel yeah. like AJ is probably the cutest dance dad, like at the oh, recital, like, taking everyone's hands and absolutely. like. Absolutely. You know. My my dad was like the the poster dad for gymnastics. Mm -hmm. um, dad so, so the four i have i have three sisters and all four of us were in gymnastics and he was the president of our gymnastics club because nobody oh. else could step up and do it <laughs> i yeah, can oh I totally see aj stepping in and, and doing something like that it's just it's precious and i'm like oh my god like you don't realize it as a kid like you know i was like oh god like dad's gonna be on the announcement thing again and you oh know all this god stuff. You know, and I just roll my eyes, and now I'm like, well, shoot, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, right. When we were when we were talking to him, and he was talking about the the new Ava Dean nail polish name, and he was like asking us to like guess it or whatever. I, I wanted to say like, do you have another daughter like <laughs> coming around like, on the way? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my her? god, cute as yeah. <gasps> That's so funny. Yeah. I could picture AJ being like on like the costume committee, <laughs> coming up with like little like suggestions for like Aww. tutu colors. Oh, totally, absolutely, and like makeup routines and stuff. Oh my god, it's. So I feel cute. like AJ is probably more extroverted than yeah. introverted. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I do think, too. yeah, I do think he probably thrives off like the energy of other people. I think mm -hmm. like you know like. And, and you wonder too, like maybe like they, they say that your personality type typically doesn't change. I know Kelsey yours did a little bit, um, maybe a letter or two here and there. Mine is mm -hmm. the same since I was, how old was I when I, when I since I was 20. Oh my gosh. At the insurance company. It's never changed, which is like really bizarre. That's crazy. I know. So it's like, you wonder like, the stuff that we've all been through in the last year and a half where like for us, yes, it's impacted our jobs and it's impacted our lives, but yeah. to the degree of like these, these, these boy bands and girl groups and pop artists, all these people have like their, their day-to-day -day lives have truly changed. They, they've gone from right. full packed arenas of people screaming their name to mm -hmm. stuff in their house and their kids mm -hmm. probably screaming at them. Like <laughs> right. yeah. dynamics. So you wonder like, I wonder if any of their personality types have changed as 
a result of that. Like, yeah, that's interesting. You know, because a lot of them are saying that, like, oh, I appreciate being at home more. Or I appreciate, you know, spending time with my family more and all this stuff. Like, right. what happens when they step back out on that stage? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I want to be there. I want to be there to experience it firsthand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. I mean, even just having this discussion, it's hard to remember what I'm like at a networking event. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Right. Yeah. Yeah, some of the questions I was like, I don't know. It's been yeah. quite a while. <laughs> don't That's remember so the last time I did that, but thanks yeah, for asking. Oh <laughs> it's really, really bizarre. So let's see here, you guys. We we've talked a little bit about our personality types. So we've talked a little bit about like whether we think um, the Backstreet Boys themselves are introverts or extroverts, and that's part of the the personality types. Um, mm -hmm. I know, <laughs> I know that we were uh, we were talking a little bit about the um, the Apple um, Radio episode too. Oh, of yeah. like that was really mm -hmm. really insightful, and it kind of goes into you know personality types a little bit. You wonder if like that's if that's mm -hmm. part of all of this as well, where they said like who's most likely to arrive late or who's most likely to offer like brotherly advice or, or unsolicited advice or, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. or any of those things. It but. was really funny. And well, the thing was, they all like agreed, like it was just mm -hmm. Brian asking AJ, I think, but yeah. they all agreed. And then at the end, Brian even asked him or Brian asked the rest of them, like, did, would you, would any of you have answered any of those any differently? And they were like, no. Oh my god, they're so cool. I know it was really adorable. And like the way they just like like one of I forget which question I think it was the unsolicited advice one where like Brian asked like who's most likely to give unsolicited advice and AJ's just like you and they all crack up. Like they all start <laughs> laughing. That sounds about right. Yeah, it was just like so adorable. I was like, yes, that's a unanimous answer. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Well, and like you wonder too, like you know, people have, you know, especially given the way that like the Backstreet Boys came about and like boy bands, a lot of mm -hmm. like more manufactured boy bands came about and girl mm -hmm. groups came about. Um, they're, they're kind of put into this, their own personality types of sorts, right? Of like the bad boy and the shy one and like all of those things. And you wonder like when you're put into that box and that label for so many years, right? right? Like is is who they really are different than what we see or do they, mm -hmm. do they put on a show? Like when they put on a show, do they yep. put on that, that persona and then they step mm -hmm. off stage and like, what if their personality type is the exact opposite of who they go on stage as like that? Just I think that's definitely a potential. Like yeah. I, I really could see yeah. that being true, which is kind yeah. of sad, but I think, I actually don't get that vibe from like the Backstreet Boys, but other other people, I definitely do think like they're this is way not who they are, and mm -hmm. it's think? like or it's just so over the top. Yeah, who are you thinking about? <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I feel like some of these people that are like kind of on our list. I know that we we they're on our list for a different reason, but like just looking at them, like yeah. I don't think everyone in NSYNC is like the way that they performed when they were in NSYNC. Right. Like in your life, I feel like you can you can kind of tell when someone's like doing something that's uncomfortable. Well, I mean, Lance, like all this, you know, for years being like heartthrob Lance, and then he's like, I actually don't like women at all. So. Yeah. <laughs> and he and I'm sure he knew it that whole time. Yeah, but probably, exactly. But like felt the pressure to be like, I have to put on this show. Yeah. 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 I even think like um, I know Beyonce is on our list too. I feel like. Like even just watching her stand um, stand up at the last Grammys, she I feel like on stage mm -hmm. she's just she's the powerhouse. She's kind of what is her her alter ego Sasha Fierce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. So like she's like she's like boom boom boom, and she just like brings it brings it brings it. But right, I feel so like, much confidence. Yeah, but I yeah. feel like even her standing. Um, who did she stand next to at the Grammys? Megan Thee Stallion. Yes, when mm -hmm. she stood next to her, I was like. Oh my God, she she looks so shy and yeah, very quiet and, and like when they so that was the best was because they caught her off guard with that announcement about her breaking the record. Yeah. I think normally 
normally she's prepared for whatever it is. Yeah, but right. that was a surprise announcement. And she was almost like, like it made her seem like very humble. Like she was yeah. almost like, wait, yeah. what? Like didn't even yeah. know how to take it. Like when we normally mm -hmm. see her as being just like so fierce mm -hmm. and confident and like would have been like, yeah, of course I won that, you know, but like <laughs> yeah. it wasn't that way. And that was right. kind of surprising. And so, yeah, right. it's, it's crazy to think that some of these celebrities, we feel like we know how they are. Right. Because we see them so much, but it, we're not right. really seeing them. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I feel like Britney's like that too. I mean, she always says just how shy she actually is off stage. I mean, mm -hmm. it, not really comparing to how she is recently, but in her prime, even like kind of off stage, she was always pretty soft. Right. I mean, still super outgoing, but mm -hmm. she always says like she's a completely different person. She feels most like herself when mm -hmm. she's on stage. With, by, by the way, we didn't discuss my shirt tonight. I have a free <gasps> I love it. Um, but yeah, That's cute. She, she definitely comes out of her shell on stage. Right, yeah. right. I do think that's interesting to watch, like, you know, or like you get, you get a personality, you get like the entertainer, not Brianne's entertainer, but the actual like mm -hmm. pop persona, entertainer, personality, mm -hmm. you know, persona on stage. And then off stage, it's like they're quiet or they're reserved or shy or like mm -hmm. some of those things. And it's like, how do you, how do you go up there and do that? <laughs> that's right. incredible to me. Like, imagine. Yeah, right. I, I don't know that I could. I don't know that I could change that quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess, I guess, offer me a couple million dollars and maybe I'll just yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I'll figure it out. There are definitely like um, some other factors at play, but yeah. yeah. I was um I was listening to this to the show on Sirius XM the other day. I forgot what it's called, but the whole premise is talking about. Uh, groups that have broken up and and how just what they do after that and they were talking about One Direction and it's such a fascinating story as you guys know I mean they were just kind of thrown together on the British X Factor after they all auditioned individually and the host was saying that he, he compared them to Backstreet and Instincts how before they exploded like they had years to rehearse and get to know each other and bond and practice. And then you have one direction, which is like five guys and same with fifth harmony, like five people who had no clue who they were, didn't know each other, didn't have anything in common necessarily besides this goal to sing and perform. Mm -hmm. And they had to kind of meld those personalities together and just figure it out and figure out how to go on stage and entertain, even though at the end of the day, right. they knew each other, you know? Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I like couldn't imagine just like, like, and I don't, I didn't watch the X Factor when One Direction was, I mean, it was the British one, but still I like didn't see all the way through, but it's just like, just hearing about it makes me think like, oh, like you're not good enough to pass individually, but let's put you guys together and see yeah. what happens. And it's right. like, well, thank God it worked and they're all precious, but like, <laughs> they're, but they're very talented. Like, could you imagine them just like being like, no, bye. Like, right. yeah, people. seriously. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Right. I think there's a big lesson in just like rejection there, you know? Yeah. Like, they were all, all told no, and you can't imagine what everything would be like if Harry Styles never went solo, if each of them never went solo. Like, they're super successful, but they were originally told they weren't good enough. Mm -hmm. Well, what's right. interesting too is like they're, they're in an interesting position because they are not only. They not only came together so quickly, but then one of them left and they went on as four for a little while. Then they kind of all did their solo projects. And now all of their fans, well, not now, but like their fans are always oh, like, get them back yeah. together, get them back together. We want you back together. Yeah. I feel like it would be weird to see them together again. Like, yeah, yeah I personally it, think I think it's I, weird. Yeah, I personally think they're all thriving as solo artists because yeah. it's allowing them to kind of explore more of what they genuinely want to do. Like as a boy band, you are forced to do a specific thing. And as we noted, they're all different personalities put together. And like, obviously not all these personalities are going to want to be doing the same act. So I think they're all grateful for that experience, but I think they're all much happier doing their solo work now. And of course, as we were saying before, you can't truly know, but it seems like it. Um, and, and so, yeah, I just, 
I agree that like I could see them maybe doing like a reunion tour or something in the future because all of the like <laughs> it's so sad seeing the fans who like like I'm a One Direction fan but I do not believe that they're going to get back together but there are like fans who genuinely believe they're going to get back together because they promised it and I'm mm-hmm. like it just it just wasn't that was an unplanned I mean thing, I wouldn't you know? hate if they like pulled the Backstreet and did a 12 show thing and that's what i'm saying i could see them doing a reunion tour like but it's just a reunion not a we're yes. back together not a jonas brothers not a we're yes. a band making new music no they'll do some kind of residency or a tour as a reunion and make a crap ton of money but um yeah. it'll, sell, like out, it'll sell out like, in two seconds um, yeah like yeah, it's they, different they when the solo careers are not going well mm-hmm. you know what yeah. i mean like when if the solo careers are just not taking off like no offense to backstreet but none of their i adore them but none of their solo careers took off in the way of like right. harry styles or justin timberlake or anything like that but yeah. that probably worked out better for us because we still get to see all of them as five and yeah. you wonder like, was that a factor to it of like hey you know what mm-hmm. we're better we're not we're better together than than we are solo not to say that we can't have them do their solo stuff and we enjoy that but yeah we enjoy them more, I think, together as a group dynamic. Mm-hmm. Than yeah, I was going to say something really similar that I don't think we've seen a group that's disbanded where each member has had such success individually across the board the way mm-hmm. One Direction has. Very and true, yeah. yeah. Say, Kelly Rowland had a couple singles here and there. Michelle didn't really do much, but like nope. One Direction, like each of them kind of stepped out and, and had some, very true. having some success. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's interesting because you because and it's like, is it because they came together in in a different way than yeah. Backstreet and and Sync and True, all that? Maybe. Like, yeah. you wonder if that kind of goes into it too. Or, I mean, I guess they weren't younger. I mean, they were all. It was like more of a business. Yeah. Relationship, you know. Right. I don't mm-hmm. know. They're just like kind yeah. of together. But right. Do you guys feel like? Thinking about each Backstreet Boy going solo, I know we're kind of seeing more of that now, like in the later years. And I kind of feel like they're totally fine experimenting with that right now because they don't really feel like they have a lot to gain or a lot to to lose. Like they've had this massively successful career. It's not like they're in their early 20s and like are banking on having success as a solo artist. I mean, maybe Nick at the time when he was putting everything out. But now I feel like they're just having fun and like making yeah. I yep. was doing this on the album. They're just like, I'm just gonna have fun with this. If it, cool, it's hang up. It, great, but I don't expect to like have this blow up and become their like, right. passion projects. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. No they're just like hobbies. Yeah, it's like, like while I, don't, I don't see them as like. Them. <laughs> yeah, I don't see yeah. their like solo stuff, and and I don't know. I don't see their solo stuff from their perspective as like I have to be number one. Yeah. Or, this is going to skyrocket me into this like crazy world tour or something like that. I think, I think, I hope I shouldn't say, I think I hope for them that it's, Hey, Backstreet is going great. And that's what's taking me around the world and all of these like great things. But this is something that I want to do on the side is to just like continue to find my own passion projects or creativity or something that is just me yep. that's yeah. me outside of that persona a little bit yeah yeah right like that's so rare mm-hmm. right yeah. although i mean mixed in a couple a couple like solo tours they haven't been very long but he's yeah. done a couple a couple just by himself um mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but yeah i mean i <laughs> i don't i don't think it's I don't think from his perspective that it's like a, this is going to bring in more money than Backstreet. I would think that's yeah. kind of apparent. To, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also think, I, I hate to draw this in sync comparison, but I also feel like it shows that that this is more musical. Like they're more true musicians. Because like the other guys in sync, they, I, mean, I think JC maybe had an album Mm-hmm. Single or two, but it's like the rest of them like completely hung it up. Like I don't even really see them like messing around and like maybe like yeah. YouTube and like yeah. sh- like I I don't see them like 
having that passion. I feel like they made their money, they kind of had their fun, and now they're just like doing other projects that are unrelated. To yeah, me. So, I think they wanted to like be celebrities. They didn't necessarily care about being musicians or singers yeah. or whatever. They're just like, whatever's the quickest way to become a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll do. Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, even just thinking about the way that they came together, I mean, they, I mean, who was it first? How we like put out an ad or like, who was like, they genuinely had this goal to like be in a yeah. group and be musicians. Yeah. So, like yeah. in sync was yeah. Kind of like, let's, yeah, let's try to be famous. Let's try to do what these guys are doing. We all can kind of sing and kind of dance. Let's have our go at it. Yep. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting Definitely. to see like how, how all the different like personalities have come together and all the different like um, bands have come together in different yeah. ways, like One Direction compared to Backstreet compared to NSYNC, um, you know, all of that. And like, and even thinking about like, um, like Hanson and the Jonas Brothers and like who have, who literally have been like musical families and like, it's mm -hmm. just, mm. just kind of, in their mm -hmm. DNA, again, no pun intended, but pun intended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's like they grew up, and you always you hear this, and, and I only know this about the Jonas Brothers because of that documentary um, that that I watch. But it's um, watching them grow up like that, and, and everybody telling stories. Oh, I always knew that they were going to make it successful, or I always knew this, and or I always knew that. Mm -hmm. And their their actual family. So then when when there are shakeups, when it comes to whether one wants to go solo or they, or they just don't want to do it anymore. Like that's a lot of pressure because not only, not only do you want to leave the band, you, you have a, like, it's a, it's a brother. It's like yeah. a little yeah. brother. So yeah. like, and yeah. maybe that, that family member is like, well, I don't want to do any other projects. I need to make money from this project, but you don't want to do it anymore. Like I can't imagine right. how yeah. complicated that must be. And I don't know from Hanson's perspective, if any of them had ever wanted to just be like, I want to only do my own thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember seeing in the documentary that like that Nick, Nick uh, Jonas, Jonas yeah. started doing his own thing. And that created like a lot of friction between all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's but, yeah. I wonder if they do have like contracts. I mean, they must like between themselves, even yeah. as brothers, but like they, they must. I would think. Yeah. Because they were so young too. Like at one point do you go, all right, let's do a contract. Make sure this sticks. Yeah. That's awkward. Yeah, it is awkward. Well, on Wednesday's Wednesday night's episode of The Masked Singer, there was a clue about the uh, Russian dolls, which obviously is Hanson yeah, for okay. anybody well, who's unaware. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> that was like at one point we we broke up and then we got back. Like it was something like that. Like we broke up and we got back together. That's I, that wasn't exact. Do you hear this chair? <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't exactly that like verbatim but it was basically that and then I was like oh my god it does sound like that is a clue that is there to throw people off to make them think it's the yeah. Jonas Brothers yes um I, I don't know what that reference is I, I like don't I'm either pretty... I know like didn't Taylor have like his own band he had like a random he did band. yeah and then he, he must have realized he's taylor hansen so he went back to hansen i don't know i don't think it was ever like meant to be like a replacement for hansen i think it was supposed to be like a side project but yeah, yeah i didn't know like really what that was referencing hmm. but That's interesting they've never yeah. broken up or just like disbanded for a little while not that i know of but i did read something interesting that it's basically been like since 20 13 that they've recorded any like new music like mm. they've released music since then but like none of it has been like new apparently it's all been like re-records of like old stuff that they released back in the day like through the fan club or whatever i don't know oh interesting i don't uh, know did the literals break up that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> no that's definitely i mean that's hilarious because there's three of them and like that's totally something yeah. they would do <laughs> Did you see the random fourth one? Why was the fourth one there? Yeah, the big <gasps> one in the back. What's his name? Wait, are you talking about the Russian dolls? Yeah. I haven't watched this show, but because there's a fourth Hanson. No, there's there, like seven Hansons. Like the oh. four in this Hanson. I literally brother, only the know the four. Mac or whatever. Yeah. There's more than four? 
I think there's well, there's seven. there's seven total siblings, but the rest of them are girls. Oh, yeah, so four boys. Sisters, maybe that's what it was. So four like, boys and three girls. Yeah. I was clueless about the girls. I, I just thought it was the, the four brothers. Yeah, what? I think the um the big Russian doll in the back was meant to just be like a. This is the Russian dolls show. Like did I don't know. See, did you see how dumb it was yes. when Jenny McCarthy was like, "I think it's ninety eight degrees." Yes. I. This <laughs> is why I don't watch this show. I literally, I literally only watched it for Nick, and I will never watch it again. It, the show is chaos from start to finish. <laughs> it. Uh, the the person who was unmasked was Mark McGrath. Yes. Mark, yeah, from uh, Sugar Ray. Right? Every every rose has its thorn in my head all night last Ray night. Be relevant. He really, yeah, is. yeah. I don't know. This it's, the show is weird. The show is weird. I, I, said, I said, he looks like his face had um some work done, and then I was like, well, well, hey, hang on. I haven't seen him in legit like twenty five years. Maybe that's just his face. <laughs> it's just his face. <laughs> I, just don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, there's seven handsome siblings, which is that's wow. I never knew they had sisters. Yeah. Me neither. Isaac, Taylor. Shh, hold on. I lost one. <laughs> I lost <him. laughs> Isaac, <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> Mac, Eight, Avery, like Avery, Jessica, Jessica, and Zoe. Right? Yeah. Wow. So, but, they, but they all go by their middle names, so that's like really confusing too. <laughs> I follow oh, one of the sisters on Instagram, Zoe. Yeah. She has a very cute baby. Oh. I'm still really from a bonus Jonas. That blew my mind. Yeah. Bonus, yeah. <laughs> bonus Jonas. Love him. I What's think, his name? Frankie? Frank? Oh, yes. See, it's Frankie weirder Jonas. in their situation because like he is the only other sibling. Right. Like, it's, like, yeah, why it's did not- they just they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> you, Frankie. At we least with Hanson, we can have two. Yeah. At least with Hanson, it was like the three of them. Then it was three girls, or yeah, I think then it was the three girls, and then the brother, the second, the fourth brother didn't come till like way, way later. Yeah, and he has like his own solo stuff that he does. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, they were just like Frankie. Mm-mm. Aww, no poor Frankie. You don't qualify. You don't fit in the contract, Frankie. <laughs> yeah. Very, I just, very I odd. Imagine, like, like watching that documentary for the Jonas Brothers, I was like, wow, that that had to be so like no wonder they were they were pissed off at each other. And you wonder, like, there was there are those stories that that Brian and Nick told when Nick first went solo that like Brian didn't talk to him for like a year or something. I think it was a year he said in an interview and wow. I was like, Oh my God. Like you wonder if that was kind of like the same thing. Like you're so close, like your brother. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know, And it's like, really, you're going to go out and, and do this. And you wonder like, what were the reasons behind it? Was it because he didn't want to be in a group anymore? Was it just because yeah. he wanted to do his own thing or, you know? Yeah. 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 Have we seen the five of them together since the parlor thing? No, no. Uh, well, we saw them on their Zoom chat clip. That was definitely recorded oh, like right, recently. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. That like very brief clip. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what why. If they, have, if they have all that footage from when they recorded the Apple podcast, they should release it. Yes. There was like a yeah. recent clip Release though that it. they published to like their Instagram, and th- all five of them were together on Zoom or whatever. However, uh, they were, yeah, yeah. Hey, and you could tell, that. yeah, you could tell it was like recorded like recent to when it yeah. was, yeah, released based on like Nick mentioning the baby and mm-hmm. some other context clues. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was definitely post parlor Good. <laughs> Woof. yeah post parlor <laughs> oh god parlor gate oh, parlor, parlor gate, gate. <laughs> oh, no. cousins that was uh yeah that was weird that was weird to see that, that was ugly. yeah that was a little that was a little bananas um I was looking at the date because I was like, well, we still haven't gotten word on the the tour dates for Backstreet. Um, right. which we all assume it's 
it's going to be postponed probably until next year because they picked a bunch of outdoor venues, which spoiler alert, please don't ever do that again. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hate our local one here in Cleveland, but Mine they, um, June. mine is in June. Oof. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah, I think some of, some of mine were in June too. I think some of ours were in the summer as well. Yeah. Yeah. So They're yeah, like you went far. No. Far yeah. off. So I mean, well, and weren't like Australia and New Zealand maybe? Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, no, that's next year. Oh, did they? Oh, they did bump those. I do so remember seeing 2022. That. Yeah. Wait. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I think I've I've seen a lot of fans say that like you know what like we'd rather just have our money back and. Mm -hmm try again next time there's some that are up yeah. in arms that are like no i want to keep my seats because i got some really badass seats <laughs> yeah but like you wonder yeah. there's so many dynamics of like people move and people you know like yeah people lose it's, it's, it's a pandemic some people just need their money back which they can do of course but um yeah but yeah i'm i don't know what what tickets did we get cal so we got cleveland virginia Chicago and, and Chicago. virginia beach yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah. I think I'd rather just start over at this point. Yeah. Can we start front? We well, yeah. And then we're like in different don't places. Even, like, yeah. yeah well, don't even like, remember what I booked for what days. I don't like, know I don't, the rescheduled days. I don't know anything. This is going to sound like really selfish, but because I've already seen the DNA tour, and I know a lot of fans have not, but because I've already seen the DNA tour, I'm like, can we do an. Can we do a different theme? <laughs> Can we pick the theme of the tour? <laughs> right. I mean, I wonder if they're going to, I mean, they must be rusty on the choreography and everything. I wonder if they'll just maybe, maybe that's what the Zoom was about. Maybe they're switching it up a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah. like, Hurry back into the millennium. Just be like, hey, we're going to go back into the millennium. We're coming on surfboards. It's going to be fine. You know. I would die. <laughs> I'd be okay with that because I did not get to see that in person. So please oh, bring it on. So good. So good. I feel like they need to change it up. I'm like, we've been living DNA for a couple years, and then the first tour goes, and then the second part gets canceled and rescheduled, and then the reschedule gets rescheduled. It's like, yeah. let it yeah. let it go. Do some new dates and get us a new fun theme, and uh, we'll all be good. Rebrand it all. Well, I want to know what's going to happen. Did any of you guys buy meet and greets? We bought. We did. Bought yeah. Chicago. Yeah. yeah, very curious about that. Yeah. Weren't they yeah. only? It was like only a few shows had them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we had to go through this like backwards way of. It doing was like a a like package that you had to buy. Yeah, yeah. it was so different. It wasn't, than it last wasn't time. like it was before, where it's like you buy, um, you buy the VIP separate, like kind yeah. of like how it was for Vegas. It was like through a, a group. It was very bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. See, I am good with them like postponing it again, but like I feel like they should just like refund everybody and like start over with the tickets. I don't know how that would work. But I'm just, like, like, I do, yeah, I did feel good about our seats. Though. Yeah, I don't yeah. need to stress again. Did you guys see like the bad bunny fiasco today? Mm -mm. No. Uh, they were like Ticketmaster was getting annihilated again today because oh, god bunny tickets. I feel like it's every day. Yeah. <laughs> Rough day to be Ticketmaster. Woof. What they, was it um, specifically about? I missed it. Bad Bunny had had tickets oh. that were released today for a pre-sale, and you know the website crashed, and people couldn't get oh, them. Okay. How yeah. do websites still crash from ticket sales? Prepare people. Come on now. <laughs> As a website designer, I know it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, isn't that what their site like literally like built is built for? <laughs> Like, literally for ticket sales what do you do we sell tickets when does your site go down when we sell, when we sell tickets, tickets. <laughs> like they should like definitely have that on their radar like a lot of people will come to our site at once during this time and the bandwidth you'll be okay or they should yeah. like do releases by city so it's not like the whole country yes for the same time. Like, there you go okay. Florida, all of Florida my fan girls night out is here. Yeah. Bringing ideas to the table, helping you with your IT needs, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and maybe they had Ticket to Master like Ball. cut the budget a little bit. I don't think I've ever heard of like Ticketmaster crashing before, but maybe I'm out of it. But sounds like they kind of 
tightened up their purse strings yeah. in the past few months. Like, just cut the bandwidth. Nobody's buying tickets anymore. Just cut True. the bandwidth. Save some money. <laughs> My worst experience, I went to buy, I think it was Britney tickets. No, it might have been Backstreet, but some one way or another, the site just like completely changed into Spanish. And I was like, okay, I I, <laughs> oh, God, I would have. No, <laughs> I'm like calling nice. my sister-in-law. I'm like, can you translate help me tickets? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's stressful. That's oh, very God. stressful. Jason's here. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Best. Being on the other side of ticketing, it's a nightmare that creates a no-win situation for fans. Yeah. Oh, it's rough. It's huh? rough. I rarely go to Ticketmaster anymore unless it's a pre-sale through Ticketmaster. I'll usually lean on StubHub. Um, and I don't you know why. Resales? Huh? You buy the resales? Mm, I must. Yeah. The StubHub is always resale, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Cool. I mean, I, I still eyeball Ticketmaster, especially because... Um, God, I remember stalking Ticketmaster like literally every hour of every day until the Vegas show. And I was like, I'm going to get better tickets. I'm yeah. going to get better tickets. And sure enough, I got better tickets. And I snuck out of my hotel room that I was in with Kelsey. And I snuck the tickets to better tickets. Or I got uh, the VIP the VIP tickets from a girl. Um, I was able to do that. And I was like, oh, Kelsey, I got to go call my dad. I'm not getting any reception in here. She's oh like, God. okay. <laughs> Amazing. One time when I was I was still working at at Orange Theory, we um, it was a day that Britney tickets were going on sale, and I actually booked a conference room for myself so I could nice. like, I didn't have an office. I only had a cube. I'm like, I need a room so I can like book in oh peace. And really yeah, that's amazing. Very smart. Yeah. Very smart. <laughs> that's very smart. Yeah. Very smart. We need something that's like, what have you done at work? <laughs> like, as, as like a fangirl, like something like that. It's just like you book a conference room so you can yeah. get your tickets in peace. In the name of fangirling, how far will you go? Yeah, yeah. that would be that's fun. <laughs> so that's funny. Oh my gosh. Um, we've talked about a lot of fun stuff today you guys um i'm trying to see if there's anything else did we miss anything hmm. we have some good notes here just to make sure we try to have our shit together a little bit yeah mm -hmm. we talked about the brotherhood we hit on all these bands um i guess we could each share jason's the fifth fan girl he yes. yeah, he's the always the fifth fan girl yeah my favorite I can, can you imagine if we invited jason on what he would wear I, I, I feel like Jason needs to be on the next episode. Yeah. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> I think we need to make this happen because I just, because remember it was, um, wasn't it on, was it pop chat or, or the happy? It was, you're talking about when I, it was my, my presentation on pop chat when he kept changing, he wore the in sync turtleneck, turtleneck and then he kept that. changing the background. The next one was the day we did the AJ interview and he did a background <gasps> as he was. I forgot as about that. With us. That was so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Oh, that so we love you, Jason. Yes. Oh, Loyal Jason, fan. Our next episode, too. So should we each touch on something group related in our own work experiences? Mm -hmm. Maybe a tip about working in a group or a fun fact um i can go first just because i was thinking about this last night um when we were doing pop chat happy hour um i was reading about different skill sets that people have on a team and how you can have what they call very vertical skill sets which means you are really proficient and have like a lot of depth in one specific skill so you're like a specialist of some sort yeah and then mm -hmm. there are some people who are more um, they have more of a horizontal skill set which means they're kind of competent across the board they're not a super expert in one area but they have you know somewhat of a competence in a, rel a, a few different things but mm -hmm. they're not like laser focused on one thing and it was saying that people that have a more horizontal skill set make really good managers because you kind of know enough to mm -hmm. manage those specialists. You're probably not as good as the, at the thing that the specialist is doing, but right. you, you can kind of coach them and speak to what you're looking for, what, what you need to, to motivate them. And then your team is made up of all of those 
specialist. So I thought that I like was that. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's my my husband's work. His his boss that he like really really loves now. He um he's like that. He will. Mm-hmm. Like his team is made up of, of a bunch of specialists, right? Mm-hmm. And so his his boss is very like horizontal when it comes to that of like he knows what each of them do enough that he can talk to it. Yeah. And enough where like they can bring some of their specialty up to him to be like, and here's why that's important or here's why right. this thing needs to be prioritized. And he's like, okay, I get it. It's not right. just like, okay, well, but you got to focus on this one thing. And it's like, no, you got to focus on all these other things. You yeah. Know? Right. And that's what makes it work really well. And I think it's, it's good because a lot of times managers, I think can feel inferior or get, have some type of complex by not being as good as the specialist, like to manage someone who is doing something that you're not better yep. at. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not how you should be. Like, why would you hire people who aren't as good as <laughs> like you want them yeah. to be better than you actually? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Them. Right. Yeah. yeah. So true. I would say, I think, um, a takeaway for me that like, I just kind of realized tonight was that I think there's probably a difference between like personality compatibility of business partners, like Britt and I, like people who are at the same level versus like a team where you're all doing different things. Because like we, like we were discussing before, I think it's helpful for teams to have multiple different personalities and skill sets and things that balance each other out. But Britt and I have found like, while we differ a little bit on Myers-Briggs, we're the same Enneagram. And I think that that has shown to like really help us as business partners because we're always on the same page with the important decisions. And I think Mm -hmm. it would cause a lot of problems if we saw like very differently on big issues like that. And Mm -hmm. so, I mean, while I, I do think there's, there's something to say for having some balance in there. I think it's important if you're going to be at the same level and making big decisions together, it's probably more helpful if you're, if you're similar personalities, because you're going to see more eye to eye on those big decisions and it's not going to cause, you know, right. like a or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. as a duo where like, you don't have like a, a tiebreaker or like someone else <laughs> kind of goes yeah. like, you know, just 50, 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No majority rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No fifth faction. I mean, we could we could throw Jason into the mix, and he could always be our <laughs> on everything. Yeah. Well, so, didn't they? Didn't they one time say like they do it like unanimously? Like yeah, they, they don't do majority rule. Like they all have to I agree. They did majority rules, didn't they? I don't know. Now I'm not sure. You're right. They yeah. did address that in the documentary. I think we have to find that and mm-hmm. remember. I feel like it was in that that interview where they're like sitting on the white boxes. Oh. And there's like weird TVs in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like a DNA thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was cute. We'll have to find the video. I'll make make it my homework to find out. (laughs) That's interesting. (laughs) What about you, Danielle? I don't know. I feel like I don't do a lot of like group projects. (laughs) (laughs) Glad there's Um, a little Well, maybe just like. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's important that you do have other like perspectives from these different like personality types when you are doing, you know, decision making of any kind, particularly in business. Um, I think some of the people who I've like worked best with are completely different personality types than me. Mm -hmm. Can can you imagine like two of me just sitting around like, (laughs) what should we do? I guess we we won't do anything because we cannot decide. So we'll just sit here and die. Um, Yeah. So I feel like it's, it's really helpful to seek out even, you know, when we were, we were like hiring a position recently and the person that we were using to hire that position suggested that we have people take a personality quiz before we like interviewed them and uh, we didn't end up doing it, but she was like, sometimes it's helpful if you know, if you like really know and understand your own personality type, then it's really helpful. Otherwise it's just kind of like for fun for the other person because like, what are you going to do with this information? But I guess because I didn't know mine at the time, I was just like, nah, just give it. But it's interesting that that was part of her like standard hiring process Yeah, to look at that kind of thing. So Hmm. It makes sense, like you were saying, Britt, that you did it at work. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We definitely, we did it um, when I was at an insurance company, which was like a bigger company, obviously. And then a smaller software company, we did it as well. And our, we took something at the software company, which was called a disc assessment. So it's just, it's just another way to measure, you know, personality types. And so (laughs) anytime somebody would have a, um, it was, it was disc D I S C. So anytime somebody had a D on theirs, <laughs> we would always call them a D. And then because they were, they were just usually very direct, very assertive, very mm-hmm. like just very a, a, usually a strong personality. So we'd just be like, yeah, yeah they're a D. You didn't, don't go by that. Um, right. but, <laughs> but it was, um, but yeah, I was, I was always an I, which I think is like influence. Um, let me see. Yeah, it tends to be more open and place an emphasis on relationships and influencing and persuading others. So like, okay. But um, but I think it was interesting to see that in a corporate workplace and then interesting to see it when like Kelsey and I took our personality tests and mm-hmm. saw the differences, but then saw like with the Enneagram, we were both helpers. And it's mm-hmm. like, I feel like the helper part like definitely goes back more to like our personalities because I think we yep. lean into the helper when it's like one of us is having a bad day or one of us is really struggling to get motivated and the other one immediately like is like how can I help or like what right. do you need to help or like how can I resolve that or how can I help you resolve that um, and but- I, I remember too that it showed like when you take the Enneagram you can compare to other Enneagrams like how would mm-hmm. I get along with them. And so we looked at two with another two and it said something like we would not make good romantic partners, but we would make great business partners. It literally said that. And we were like, Oh my God, great. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how like some of those come into like your, your personal lives and then they come into like your professional life too. I think that's kind of, kind of fascinating, but Um, but I think what I was thinking about initially was not just the dynamic between Kelsey and I as business owners, but when we hire people, it's, um, we don't have a lot of luck hiring people, which like, we we don't, we have somebody on our team now who we just hired, um, gosh, when did we hire her month or month or so ago? We, we hired, um, uh, a girl named Ashley and she is incredible. And I think, she just, she, she gets us. And I think a lot of it goes back to the personality. Now we didn't do a personality test or anything like that, Mm -hmm. but it's just one of those things when you find like a connection of somebody who understands the importance of your business, they understand. I mean, we've known her for what we've known her like three years, Kels. Right. And we never, we never ended up hiring her just because we're like, Oh, well, we don't know if we really need that service. And so, Mm -hmm. um, She's, she's been probably one of, um, one of few people that we've brought into Laundry Daydream that has stuck around with Laundry Daydream long enough. And I, and again, I don't know if that goes back to personalities. I don't mm-hmm. know if it goes back to the person themselves and their work ethic or what that is. But like, now that I think about yeah. it, I'm like, oh, I wonder what personality Ashley is because she mm-hmm. works with us really really well or if that even has anything to do with it and maybe it's just her work ethic you know yeah Yeah. that's exciting yeah so we'll see but um megan's asking about our dynamic oh i think that's a great question i like i said earlier i feel like i'm in a fan girls night out job interview (laughs) (laughs) but i do think like i feel like i've definitely seen the differences at least in like i feel like Britt and I and Brianna and Danielle are like, you know, we're kind of different in those ways where like we have the, cause Britt and I are like, our feeling side comes out a lot, yeah. you know? Yeah. And Brianna and Danielle will help us be like, let's think about this in a more logical way. Like, more logical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's exactly. It, and it's been great because I've said like, okay, I need that. Like, because yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I feel like, but I feel like, but yeah. I feel like they're like, no, stop feeling and think. <laughs> well, I feel like feelings are important, but you know, sometimes like, okay, but, but no, that's not I mean, what actually is. No, from Kel- from that perspective though, like going back and like bringing, if there's something that Kelsey and I are struggling with, with, with our business and we're just like, 
how can we find a resolution to this? And we're just stuck between the two of us of like, what do we do? Like, what do we do with this? We bring it to Brianne and Danielle and they just give a different perspective, not just from like, uh, like from, from their own career experience and and business owner experience, but just like a different, just like a different lens. It's just like, well, have you thought about it this way? And it's like, well, shoot, no, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't because I was too wrapped up in like more of the feeling side of things versus taking yourself out of the emotion a little bit and putting some logic to it and being like, okay, you can Mm -hmm. still have a relationship with that person. You, but you can still get paid money. (laughs) And, and <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's, it's hard yeah. to, when it's yourself, like it's hard to make those decisions because from the outside looking in, like, yeah, I feel like other people can see how awesome you are more than yeah. we give ourselves credit. Like it's hard for us to realize what our own worth is. And sometimes you need those friends and people in your corner to kind of tell you like, no, you are, <laughs> you're so amazing. You should do it yeah. this way or, you know, cause that's, that's when doubt sinks in and that's when we all kind of second guess mm-hmm. everything we're doing. And I think that's great about the dynamic we have is that we all hype each other up and yeah. I have my doubts yeah. every day and I love turning to you guys and you give me great suggestions and I know we all lean on each other that way. So I yeah, you. I feel like yeah. more like, like specific to the show though, I think, I mean, obviously, you know, we started really just talking about Backstreet, right? And then yeah. we started to say, like, but but what else? Like, what else is out there? And again, getting different perspective of different fandoms and different things that are kind of trending pop culture wise, right? And mm-hmm. and and bringing some of that. Like, if we didn't open open this dialogue to some of that, we wouldn't have been able to talk about you know, how One Direction came together versus Backstreet versus NSYNC and when they broke up and why that happened and, you know, all of these things. And so I think, I think one of the things that I think we did, the four of us did really well when we, um, when we kind of made that transition to not a little less Backstreet, but a a little less focused just on that and a little more focused on, you know, kind of pop culture and fandoms in general is mm-hmm. we all checked in with each other to be like, are you good with that? Because if you're not good with that, right. we're not going to do it. Like yeah. we yeah. want all four of us to have fun here. And of course we want our audience to have fun too, but for the four of us to show up excitedly, we need to be excited about what we're going to be talking about. Cause yeah. Yeah. it's our little escape. This is our, this is right. our place to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is why it's because we position it that way as kind of like our escape. Like we all have craziness going on during the day, but like we never let this become stressful, really. Um, yeah. I think that that makes it easy to make decisions. Like, you know, Megan was asking how we pick dates and stuff. Like if one of us is on vacation or if there's some like personal conflict, if it was our, our real business or our main project, like, mm, that would be problematic, but because yes. we're trying to give each other those creative liberties and we're not wanting this to be a stressful thing. It's just a fun thing. It makes right. those decisions fall into place easier. Yeah. Right. Right. If Nick Carter exactly. can, can do it, we can do it. Right. He <laughs> <Yeah. time. laughs> oh, I will say we've rescheduled quite a bit, but we have not rescheduled as much as Nick Carter. So no. we still <laughs> could. If Nick Carter can do it, so can we. <laughs> Ironic because we rescheduled because of Nick because Carter. of Nick. Yeah. Because of Nick Carter. It's fine. Time, We're like okay, yeah. thanks for having your show, your live stream at exactly the your same one time live stream us. this year. Yeah, <laughs> same day. Rude. Rude. On, Nick. Oh. Look at our calendar next time, Nick. Yeah, yeah please check on. first. Please confirm <laughs> calendar <laughs> syncing. Calendar. <laughs> yeah, please, please check this link before scheduling any further content. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. Well, you guys, let's let's wrap up. Let's wait. Yeah, I was gonna say, oh, great, you have a request. <laughs> been, I don't even have the comments open. I apologize. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Aww. Oh my gosh. Emily Aww. is she is the cutest and the sweetest. Megan, this comment. Thank you. Meg, I love Megan. You guys Emily. are so sweet. sweet. Aww. Aww. That's so sweet. We F- are yes, no, yeah. Emily fan girls, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I was telling Megan before the show that like 
the four of us can't show up to a show unless her and Emily are in the audience. So <laughs> no pressure, but they've got to be there in order for us to go live. <laughs> yes. We so appreciate all the love. love Wait, can go. we do one more? Can can I ask for one more shout out other than um Megan and Emily who are loyal to every single show? Can I give one more shout out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Geo. Oh is my Gio. god. My hero. We love her. She's I the best. On like, I want to be I, her when I grow up. The cackle that I had out loud at her tweet about Blood being thicker than water, but nothing was thicker than Nick Carter's thighs. <laughs> I, I died. I, I died. My favorites are when my favorites are when she takes her Nick follow out on dates. Oh my god! I feel like those are takes, the best. It takes me on the little dates with her. It's so I like cute. she's very funny and very creative, and we're happy to have someone like her in the fandom. It's yes. Yes. She much is needed. Really good. I love when she unearths like a clip that even the four of us yes. didn't go down a rabbit hole in yes. yeah. you know? Oh my god, I agree. That's impressive. She was um I was I was reading something, I think it was on Tumblr or something the other day, and it was it was about um Louis Tomlinson from One Direction, because I'm a big fan of him. And so I was scrolling through and I was like, wait a minute. And I caught I caught the black and uh green hair and I was like Oh my god, it's Geo! <laughs> so it was like it was one of those moments. It felt like I was seeing like you know how if you ever see like a work friend, but in real yeah. life, yeah, it's just yeah. like, oh my gosh. And she was on the video talking about when she met him <sighs> at oh the god. X Factor when he was a judge because he came back to be a judge. Oh and god, that's so cool. So and she said that he had he had opened the door or like he went like he had his like way back and forth because he would go smoke. And he would come back in and he'd like, he'd stop and ask like the people in the audience. And like, she had like a little screen capture where you could see her in there. And he was asking like, like, how are you guys doing? Are you having a good time? And all this stuff. And she's like, he just smelled so fresh. And I was like, oh my oh, God. I died. We love talking about smell. Oh my God. That's smells. so good. So here's, so good. here's a shout out to Gio, who is keeping, yeah. keeping the fandoms alive. She I'm, is. Yeah, I also, I love her commentary because she, like, has the stamina to watch, like, a lot of what Aaron does. And I love her commentary on Aaron. And I think it was her that coined the, like, Walmart Carter. She, like, (laughs) referred to him as a Walmart Carter. (laughs) Oh, God. And I'm like, I will never, I will never be that creative. I will never be that cool. Never. And I, same. I just, I just, that, that tweet. That tweet That's this hilarious. Week, I was like, <laughs> and like I, I can't explain it to anybody here. Nobody cares about Nick Carter's thighs except you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, I can't deeply. And I put it yeah. in our private chat, and I was like, I'm dead. This is it. Yeah. I feel like I missed that, and I'm really upset about it. Wait, <laughs> hold on, I, have, I I saved it. Please, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was I so good. I will read it because was it Geo yeah. that tweeted? So Backstreet from their brand account the other day tweeted it was a picture of all of them on stage, but they were all, it was just their silhouettes. And mm-hmm. it, having you guess who's who and someone yeah. it had to have been her. She's like, she was like, ha ha ha. As if I can't <laughs> decipher who all these are just by Nick's eyes. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <really need. laughs> it, cool. like, it says normalize prioritizing Nick Carter over family. <laughs> Yeah, Blood may be thicker than water, but nothing is thicker than those thighs. <laughs> oh my god! I feel like I saw the first part of that and stopped reading because that alone was enough. <laughs> yeah, See, Gio's even in my phone. I saved it like that's that. amazing. That's how much I love her. Oh my god, She's, that's great. Yeah, yeah we honestly, Queen Gio, we fan, we fangirl over Gio in our group chat. We'll be like, yeah. did you see what she said today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I it's feel true. like we need to start having a list of 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 people that like have just we fangirl over so absolutely um, yeah obviously geo makes that list so we need to have so the other thing i want to acknowledge geo for i hate i don't really like to bring up age but she's she's 22 yeah she you missed know? a like, lot of the like big and, yeah. yeah yeah and she's here with us with us i adore her with us, you know, know. like it's I, awesome i respect oh that a lot. i told you yeah. so she's she's in italy 
Yeah. And so she she had tweeted something the other day. We're talking about her like she's a Backstreet Boy because let's be real, she would be the sixth one. <laughs> like um, that's, how, that's how much I feel like I need a little geo uh, fungal pop up here. But it's oh my god! Um, <laughs> how would you do that? So anyway, yes. um, but yeah, she. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? I completely lost. She's in Italy. She's in Italy. Something oh yeah, about she's in Italy. Italy, and she was saying something about you know because there's a lot of travel restrictions and things like that, and mm -hmm. you know nothing, nothing really is stable anywhere right now. <laughs> so I just chimed in. I'm like, how? Who do I have to pay to get you out of Italy and just come hang out with me in Ohio? Right. <laughs> right. I just. I know. Oh, she's the greatest. A, I I look forward to her tweets so much. Just so much joy in the fandom. I know. Definitely yeah. need it. Great light. I know. So good. We're blessed right, well, to have her. We said we were going to wrap this up 20 minutes ago, but then we're fangirling over Geo, so well worth it. Um, right. But anything else, you guys? Did we miss anything? Um, I think that's it, but as long as we're fangirling over Geo and all the people we love, we do have to get Georgie back here. Yes, wow. Georgie. Be tuned. I know we had to reschedule that, but mm -hmm. that will back. Yes, it will happen. Georgie will be it here. Will. It will happen. Yeah, it will. that's going to be a great Georgie's episode. Be on, and and Geo's going to be on, and Jason. Jason. <laughs> We're signing so, up yeah. people without ever even asking them first. That's how we decide. We just <laughs> you randomly, you know, indoctrinate people like, oh, this person will be on. We yeah. will be on. And, um, we manifest. We're manifesting. Yeah. On. We're manifesting. We, we made AJ happen. You yeah. guys. We it. did. It was a lot of praying. We I mean, I don't know. We got AJ. I don't know if we can get Geo. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> I think we need to try. I think so. Too. Yes. I think we should make a list of like our dream guests and just just go for it. Yeah. I also um, love what Gio yeah. her relationship with Lance Bass. Oh yeah. Oh, has God. sort of it evolved. Crushes. They follow each other on TikTok. Oh, they TikTok like thing. That's right. That's comment right. on each other's TikToks. Very it's like funny. it seems very cute. Yeah. She's my hero. Yeah. I, want to I love you. it. <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, oh I wish God. I was that cool when I was young. Now I'm old. I know. I want to be Geo when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, thank you all for tuning in. Yes. Yay. Discussing personalities yeah. and groups with us. I know we are lucky and fortunate that the Backstreet Boys are a group and that the four of us are, are a group and that we have a group of great fans that that join Yay. us yes yes cool. we're happy to be back we're happy to have all of you with us this is such a fun escape and we hope that it's just as fun for you guys to get a little escape as well mm -hmm. all right guys, Thanks, we'll guys. See you later. bye bye, bye megan <laughs>